Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today I'm going to teach you how to add tab-like functionality to your text boxes in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from David in Danville, Virginia, one of my Silver members. David says, is there any way to use the tab key in Microsoft Access text boxes like you can in Word? Looks like text boxes don't allow tab characters. It just moves the focus to the next field. Yep, that's, that's generally how they work. I'd like to keep my source code samples and other documents in Access. Plus, I get spec sheets from one of my suppliers as plain text with a lot of tabbed columns, and I'd like to store them in Access too. Any ideas? Well, David, you're right. That's how Access treats the tab key. It moves you to the next field. But with a little bit of VBA, a couple lines of code, we can intercept that tab key and replace it with spaces, which will act very much like you want with the tab characters. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Before we get started, this is gonna be a developer level video. We don't need a lot of code, maybe about six or seven lines, but you gotta know where to put them. Now I'm gonna show you where to put them, but if you've never done any VBA programming before and you wanna learn, go watch this video first. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA. And we're gonna need an if-then statement, couple of them actually, to, uh, to check to see what key is pressed and all that stuff. So if you've never used an if-then before, go watch this. And we're gonna use the send keys command. Now send, key, I'm not a huge fan of send keys, but once in a while it's got its purpose. And like I said, it's the king of the good enough sometimes functions. I'm gonna show a better method in the extended cup, but that involves a lot more programming, but send keys will get the job done. So go watch this if you've never used send keys before. These are all free videos. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. Go watch them and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website. And let's say for each record in here, each customer, whatever it is, we want to store a bunch of text. And that text has a bunch of like tab columns in it. Now, I personally like to store my source code samples in an access database. So if you got something like this, all right, where's my global module? There it is, okay? You wanna take your little source, your little functions and stuff and store these in your table. And that's kind of what David's looking to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is let's pretend, this is, I know it's my customer form, but we're just gonna pretend it's my source code form. I'm gonna delete most of this stuff here. Delete that, delete this, delete this, okay. We're gonna use this box here to store our text. Now, let's do that, okay? Now, the first thing is, save this, open it back up again, all right? If I take some source code like this, all right, let me copy that to my clipboard, and I'll come back in here and I'll paste it in. All right, that's not too bad. Um, but when you're working with tabs especially, okay, a mono-spaced font is better than a regular proportional font because each character will show up, will take the same amount of space going across in columns. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna switch this guy to a mono spaced font like Courier New. There you are, Courier New, okay? And now you'll be able to see that it's more lined up in columns right now. Okay, that's the first step I do. Whenever I'm working with columns, okay? Source code especially. Another thing I also want to note is make sure you're using plain text and not rich text because rich text this box is gonna have some hidden characters in there like divs or if you've got, if you've got font changes, color changes. You can't see that in, in the actual characters, but it'll be in the box behind that. So this will only work with plain text. All right, now normally, let's say you wanna add something in here. You wanna make some modifications. So you wanna come in here, you wanna press enter, and then you wanna tab over under that do events, right? Tab, and oh, it moves you to the next record. Why is that? Well, because when you press tab in access, the form's gonna grab that and it's gonna move you to the next field, okay? So the tab character is actually processed by the form itself, not this text box, okay? So we have to intercept that character at the form level, that's the trick, okay? No, no key event in here, trust me, I've tried them all. No key event in here will properly handle that tab key. So what you have to do is, you have to use a form event we're gonna use the forms key down event right here on key down. But before you do that, 
you have to tell the form that it's okay to intercept those key presses. There's a property down here called key preview. Turn that on. That's important. Don't forget that. Once key preview is on, now the form can handle the key down events before the text boxes get them. Okay? Now come up here to the forms key down event. Where are you? I just had you. Right there. On key down. All right? Dot, dot, dot. Now we're in the forms key down event. As a side note, if you want to learn more about that key preview property, I talk about it more in my help system video where I teach you how to press F1, right? You press F1 to get context sensitive help. We do something similar with the key preview there. Okay, so while I'm in here, what does key down give me? Well, it gives you a key code and a shift. We're going to ignore shift for now. Shift just basically tells you if the user is holding down the shift, control, or alt keys. We don't need that for this example. Key code is the ASCII code for whatever key is pressed. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm just going to message box key code right now. And you'll see what the characters are that are coming in. Ready? Hit save. Let me go back over here. Close this. Open it up. All right. I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to press the letter A. Look at that. 65. Okay. I'm going to press the letter B. Look at that. 66. Okay. I'm going to press the tab character. 9. So remember that. Tab is 9. All right, and then when it processes it, it moves. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to note that tab is nine. Okay, tab equals character nine. Okay, so now what I'm going to say is, okay, if key code equals nine, then the user pressed the tab key. Do some stuff and def. Everything else I don't care about. I only want nine. Okay. And in fact, we don't, probably don't need that then. Okay. Tab. Nine. All right. So now maybe in here, we'll message box. Tab, right? Tab is pressed. Okay. So come back out here. Type in some stuff. I'm typing. I'm typing. I'm typing. Okay. I'm going to press tab. Boom. There's the tab. See? Okay. Hit okay. And then it continues on. Now, the, the next thing I want to do is I want to stop that actual tab from processing. All right, let's, let's get it to not go to the next field. How do you do that? Well, we can in here, we can trick it. At the very end of this block, we can say key code equals zero. That's a trick. If you say key code equals zero, it, it essentially nullifies that key press. Okay, so watch now. I'll come back in here. I'll go type, 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 type. I'll hit tab. Okay, it knows the tab key was pressed. And then it stops. It doesn't do anything. So we can handle that tab key now however we want. All right, okay. Now, I don't want the tab to happen on just any field, right? Because right now the form is looking at everything that's pressed in this entire field. I only want this to ha happen if the user is in this field. This guy's called notes, right? That's the name of this box. It's notes, right? Let's make sure. Could be. Yeah, it's notes. Now, how do I tell what field the user is currently in? Well, that's a special thing. It's called screen dot active control dot name all right and if that equals notes then do some stuff and again we'll put that we'll put the key code inside of there and then end if all right so user is in the notes field otherwise again ignore it so they've got to hit a tab key and they've got to be in the notes field so let's save that now and uh, here i'll put the message box back in there Okay, ready? So if I come back over here now, let's close it and open it. Okay, come in here. I'll do some typing, 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 typing. Tab, there's my tab, right? It ignores it. How about up in here? Da, 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 da. Tab, it ignored it and went to the next field, which is what it's supposed to do there. Okay, all right, now we're cooking with gas. Okay, now, as far as the tab character goes, whenever you copy and paste stuff like from the visual code editor and stuff, it just replaces it with space characters. And that's what we're going to do here. It's not perfect, but for what David wants to do and what I do most of the time, it's good enough. All right. And each of these tab characters gets replaced with one, two, three, four spaces. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to insert four spaces wherever that cursor happens to be. And how do we add characters? Well, the easiest way is with a little send keys action. So we're gonna go send keys. Now you could put in here one, two, three, four if you want to, right? 
comma, and then wait is you want to wait until these are done before continue processing. Yeah, let's wait. Okay, get rid of that extra line. Save it. All right, ready? I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna hit tab. Boom, look at that, four characters. I'm gonna hit tab again, boom. And now I can continue typing, All right? Message box, hi, enter, tab, tab. More stuff here, see that? Enter, tab, 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 another tab here, and so on. And you can use it in the middle here too, like tab, tab, tab. It'll add four characters, wherever you happen to be. Is it perfect? No, but it's good enough. You wanna just come in here and make some changes, right? So there you go, that's not that hard, right? It's about what? Really, technically, it's one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code in the right spot. And you got to know to turn the key preview on. So see, there you go. That's how you do it. Now, like I mentioned in my send keys video, send keys isn't perfect. I'll use send keys if it's something that is only running while the user is actually typing. All right. I never will use send keys for anything automated, like an event that runs. So in the extended cut, we're gonna get rid of the send keys. We're gonna use some actual real code to figure out the position that we are inside that text box and put the code, put the tabs there, put the spaces there. And we're gonna make it a global function so you can use it from any form. Right now it's kind of locked onto that form and to that field. But by making it a global function, we can use it anywhere in the entire database with just a you know one line of code for that text box or that form. And I haven't done one of these in a while, I'm gonna have a gold member bonus so instead of just adding four spaces, we're gonna use actual tab stops. So it'll count the number of spaces that it needs to the next actual tab stop. That'll be, that's a lot more difficult. That's, 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 yeah, that's, that's why it's for the gold members. That's a, that's a bunch of code. That took me all morning. <laughs> but check it out. Silver members that up get access to all of my extended cut videos. If you wanna learn really cool stuff, they're all in the extended cut videos. And if you have fun learning this stuff, I got lots of access developer lessons available. I take you from the beginning right on through up to the advanced stuff. We go through all kinds of stuff. I got 43, as of today, 43 different levels available. Each one's at least an hour long. Some of them are like four hours long. But we have lots of fun learning and we'd like you to join us. And if you have any questions, post them down below. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. 
And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.